Uh, today's topic will be uh, courage in the midst of a white mob. Yeah, let's start here. Let's go to Luke. This is the book of Luke, chapter 7 and verse 31. Yeah. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Read that again. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Now start at the top. Verse 31. Yeah. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I like, liken the men of this generation? Uh -huh. And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Go ahead. And calling one to another. And saying, we have piped unto you, and you have not danced. And we have mourned to you, and you have not wept. So these, so the Lord is saying, the people of this generation, man, it's like they still playing. These guys in there trying to take over the government. They can't, they, the, the other nations, this mob that we saw is trying to take over, you know, Capitol Hill and all of that. Now people are still playing. They still playing. They don't even see the end coming. All right, so if y'all can see that right, let me see. Let me see it over here because I can't see it from here. So let's see how many people actually voted for Donald Trump. 70 million people actually agree with Donald Trump. That mob is going to continue to grow. Might have been a few thousand out there, but that mob say it's actually... 70 million of them that want to go in there and that, that stuff that y'all saw them doing is 70 million of them out there that actually want to do that. So now, you know, I'm sure the demographics is, is broke down somewhere, but I think around like uh, three fourths of them were Caucasian. And then when you look at the, the Democratic side, I think about one third of them was uh, Caucasian. You know, so it's a lot. It's a lot of these. Let's, let's just read the scripture. <laughs> Let's go to Judges chapter 2, verse 21. Let's go to Judges right quick. There's a lot of them out here. Read that thing. The book of Judges chapter 2 and verse 21. Yeah. I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died, uh -huh. that through them I may prove Israel, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it or not. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily. Mm. Neither delivered he them into the hand of jo Joshua. So the other nations was around us. That's what we're dealing with today. The other nations, we are in the midst of the other nations right now. We are in the midst of a white mob as we speak. Go ahead. Chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them. Even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. So the Lord said, in the midst of that mob, he's going to prove you. We're in the midst of a white mob right now. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6. Yeah. Be strong and have a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is, is that that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. He will not fail us or forsake us. We got to be of good courage. Even though we're in the midst of that mob right now, we got to stay in good courage. Let's go back. Let's go back. So uh, let's pull up that, that first video that uh, Ananiah just sent. Look at this guy. Look. One black guy. He got a stick. <laughs> he called for backup. He like, look, <laughs> he retreating. I know y'all only see one, but it's a whole mob, obviously, that's behind that one guy right there. There they come. There they come. Pause, pause that thing. Pause that thing. What you say, oh, nice? 
It's like during uh, when we were in the chattel slavery times when they got to save Massa House. You know what I'm saying? Shoot. I mean, I think I, I don't I don't want to, you know, discredit the brother, man. I mean, it's a lot of them and it's just one guy, you know. He ain't got no backup. Like, I'm, I'm gone. Like, I'm not going to risk my life <laughs> and all those people just coming at me. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm looking at the man and I know what's going through his mind. <laughs> what's going through his he, mind? Tonight? He has a gun on his hip. Yep. But he's thinking, if I pull my gun and shoot one of these fools, I'm going to have to suffer the consequences. Yep. So he's got fear of the crowd coming at him. Yes. And he has fear of what may happen to him if he takes action that he should be taking. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're they not going to. Because if you shoot one. Yeah, you better shoot a bunch. Yeah, you better empty your clip. It's still a whole bunch of them coming. <laughs> and run. It's still a whole After bunch of them coming. I mean, you know, I don't know if any of y'all ever been, been jumped. Uh, but I have, you know, I'm from Dallas, so it's not always nice times out there. Uh, this one time, oh, nice, it was one time these three guys jumped me, you know what I'm saying? But I knew, go ahead, go ahead, and, oh, nice. I was going to ask why. That's a that's a whole nother story, you know, I don't really want to get into. But anyway, I kind of asked for it, you know what I'm saying? I'm at work, and I see these guys, they don't like me, I don't like them. I'm by myself, it's three of them, though. And I'm like, well, I get off work, 9 o'clock. So what happens at 9 o'clock? These guys are outside waiting for me. So, you know, we talking, and they going, they talking noise. And, and I, I, I mean, it's three of them, so I know I'm losing. So I just swing, you know what I'm saying? I hit one of them, but then I woke up. I was say that's the key, man. <laughs> you better sh- make sure if you if you yeah, yeah, I got jump, one. you got to hit one as hard as one. you possibly what, what can. What happened to TLN? They was I was at work by myself. You didn't text them, let them know, like, hey, about bro, to go this down is 9 this PM. is bro, you, you know what year this is. You talking about text them, like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm gonna page them. Like, what is that? That's not gonna help me. Then they gotta find a phone. Yeah, then they gotta the find a phone. Then you gotta have a phone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are you talking about? Oh, nice, you didn't so text no, them. Oh, nice, man. Hey, what are you talking about? I don't know how far you was. Uh, you, you nah, I was I was in high school, so yeah, it was no it was no texting nobody, was no group text, was no Facebook, none of that stuff, man. Was nothing I can do. This so. is Onias, the sidekick is older than Onias, so you know. Oh my gosh, so yeah, man, so that's what happened. I told him I get out of work nine o'clock, and yeah, they was right there waiting for me. It was it was uh yeah, my dad showed up late to pick me up from work. I'm like, man, why you show up so late? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad day. Anyway, back to the scriptures. So there is something called mob mentality. You know what I'm saying? Can you look that up? Can you look up mob mentality? Uh, let's go to uh, Matthew 23. I'm sorry, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. My apologies. Matthew 24. <clears throat> I want verse 20. We're going to go back into this, but let's read verse 28. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 28. So this is Christ talking about the end times and what we're going to be seeing at the end times. Go ahead. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Read that again. For wheresoever the carcass is. So wheresoever the carcass is, we are that carcass. Go ahead. There will the eagles be gathered together. There shall the eagles be gathered together. Who is the eagle? Let's go to the scripture. Where are you going? Obadiah, sure. Let's do it. Let's see who the eagle is. The book of Obadiah, chapter 1 and verse 1. Yeah. The vision of Obadiah, thus said the Lord God concerning Edom. Concerning who? Concerning Edom. Okay. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, an ambassador sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou, thou, though thou dwellest in the cleft of the rock, uh-huh. whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. So though Edom, though the Caucasian, though the white man exalt himself as what? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. Yep. And, thou, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So the eagle is United States of America. The Caucasian race, Edom, the white man. Let's go back to Matthew 24 again. Read that again. Matthew chapter 24, verse 28. Yeah. For wheresoever the carcass is, 
There will the eagles be gathered together. So wherever the dead bodies are, who is the dead? Who are the carcasses? Let's go to that. Where are you going? There you go. Proverbs 21, 16. See, I ain't even have to say it. Yeah, I knew where to go. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 16. Yep. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So what did the Lord just say we was like? Like, like a bunch of children. We have no understanding. We are dead. That's how we know. This is, again, this is the prophecy that how we know we are the Israelites. And we know who they are because we surrounded. We boxed in. We just saw that it was over 70 million of these people that truly agree with the ideology of Donald Trump, with the ideology of Americanism. They agree with that. It's 70 plus million of them. We Israelites. Now, the scriptures say we like the sand of the sea, but Judah, we specifically here. We the one that's got to deal with this. Where's that scripture? Go to Genesis, what was it, 31? Where they had their hand in the neck. 49. 49 and verse eight. 8, yeah. The book of Genesis, chapter 49 and verse 8. Yeah. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Yep. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Yep. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So we going to always be surrounded. We're going to always be fighting with these people. We here. Judah's here specifically. Then against you, it's a car and Zebulon. But the majority of us on this side is say Judah. We're the ones that got to deal with them. Read it again. Verse 8. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Mm -hmm. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? So it say that Judah, we was uh, like kids. Read it again. Judah is, a, Judah is a lion's whelp. Yep. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Mm -hmm. He stooped down. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. Yep. And as an old lion. Who shall rise them up? Like, like we read before, they like a bunch of kids. But we don't know we're in the midst of a white mob right now. And we got to maintain our courage. We got specific things we got to do in the midst of this mob. Right? Let's go to Titus 1 and 5. What must we do in the midst of this mob? Titus chapter 1 and verse 5. Yeah. For this cause left I thee in Crete, mm -hmm. that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, yep. and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So we, we have to continue to build up and, and make sure we putting works in, even though we're surrounded by this mob. We got to still have courage to do the things we have to do. In the midst of this, this uh, what is it, mob, we got to still do this. We got to still keep the commandments of God and continue to try to build up his kingdom. Read that thing again. Verse 5, for this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou, sh thou, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, yep. as I had appointed thee. Yep. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly. Not accused of what? Not accused of riots or unruly. Man, I, so I seen it, I can't find it nowhere, but it was this one Negro that was at this dang on. Uh, what they call it, uh, assault on the Capitol. It was a Negro there. Not the not the guy we just saw that was a police officer, not him. But it was a guy there. He said he was just sitting outside watching the whole thing. This dude was crazy, man. He said, I had my watch on, my chain on. They didn't say nothing to me. Oh, it's going to happen. Oh, they're going to have a problem with you at, at some point. Because it say it's 70 plus million of them. They're going to they gonna form... That mob at some point, we'll get to it. Let's go to Judges chapter 5 again. Judges chapter 5, start at verse 7. Judges chapter 5 and verse 7. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel. Until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. Yeah. They chose new gods. That's what, so again, going back to, like you said, while people are, are asleep, they childish. They sleep, they drunk off of these new gods they got. Read on. They chose new gods. 
Then was war in the gates. Mm -hmm. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? Yep. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Read verse 8 again. Verse 8. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Then was war in the gates. It's going to be war inside the gates. Inside this country, it's going to be war. Go ahead. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? So that, that shield and that spear, again, man, we got, you know, brothers running around with their little nines and the ARs and stuff. Man, these dudes got planes and F-18s and ships and stuff. Man, they got all type of stuff, man. It's a whole different ball game. Read that thing again. Verse 8. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Yep. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? So, again, again, the, the problem, the main problem with our people is going to be it's no, no leadership. With no leadership, who's going to strategize, who's going to galvanize the troops to move us against the, the, the mob that we're we in the midst of? Who's going to be the leader? Every Negro man and Negro woman think they should be in charge. Every one of them. It's crazy. And you, you see it coming into fruition, man. Every... Every woman pastor, man pastor, uh, dude with a, with a gun, they all think they should be in charge. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, now. You got something? Okay. Read on. Verse 9. My heart is toward the governors of Israel. His heart is where? My heart is toward the governors of Israel. His heart is toward the governors of Israel, the leaders of Israel. That's us. Those that's going to be keeping the commandments of God. That's who his heart is towards. Read that again. My heart is toward the governors of Israel yeah. that offer themselves willingly among the people. Yep. Bless you, the Lord. So he said, we got to offer ourselves willingly amongst the Lord. So again, what are the things that we have to do? We got to offer ourselves willingly to the Lord in the midst of this mob. We got to offer ourselves willingly to God. That's the only thing that's going to give us that courage. Not your, your nine, your AR, your little shotgun. It's not, that's not going to get you anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like we just saw the dude. It was a whole mob coming, and they all thinking the same thoughts. They all feeling the same way and moving the same way. Read that again. Verse 9. My heart is toward the governors of Israel yeah. that offer themselves willingly among the people. Yeah. Bless ye the Lord. Speak, ye that ride on white asses, ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. Yeah. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water... There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. So the thing we got to be doing here is rehearsing the righteous acts, continuing to show up for the Sabbath day, keep the commandments to the best of your ability. We got COVID and Corona and, and mobs and all type of stuff going on. We got to continue to do what we can do. And again, man, I'm not telling none of y'all to come in here sick, man. If y'all sick, don't be coming in here. You know what I'm saying? I was sick last couple of days, so I didn't, I didn't come. I don't want to expose y'all to anything. You know what I'm saying? So y'all got to do the same thing. Y'all got to think the same way. Read it on. Even the righteous act toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Yeah. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah. Awake, awake, utter a song. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let's go back to Matthew 24. So the things we got to do in the midst of this mob is what? Continue to rehearse the righteous acts and go out and try to build uh, the things that we got to build for the, for the Lord. We got to continue to do that, even though we're in the midst of a white mob. Let's go to Matthew 24 again. Let's start at verse 20 this time. Matthew chapter 24, verse 20. Hold on, let me get there. Give me two seconds. Two seconds. All right, I'm ready. Matthew chapter 24, and verse 20. Yeah. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Neither on the Sabbath day. Yeah. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. Yeah. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Read verse 21, 22 again. Verse 22. And except those days should be shortened. So that's what we're dealing with right now, man. These, these days, these minutes, these hours is flying by. He's shortening the days for us. Because we're in the midst of a white mob. Read it again. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. So unless the Lord was sh uh, shortening the time, it would nobody be able to make it out. Go ahead. But for the elect's sake, 
those days shall be shortened. So for the elect's sake, for those that have given themselves willingly, like we just read in Judges, those that are uh, left here in Crete in the midst of this white mob that, that's doing the things that the Lord asked them to do, ordaining elders in every city, he said, those people, that's why he's shortening the days. Go ahead. Then if, it, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ. So when it say Christ, man, it's talking about the anointed. The majority of our people believe that the liberal government, that the, the, the Democrats are the anointed. They're going to help us out. They're going to save the day. They're going to change the hearts and mind of the 70 plus million people that agree with Donald Trump. That's what they think is going to happen. It, it baffles me, man. They, they come on the news and they say, oh, uh, if, 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 if Trump says this, then he'll change the hearts and mind of the people. Nah, man. Nah. It's not going, it's not going to change. These people still believe what they believe. It's crazy, man. Cause you, you, you know, I don't know how many of y'all, I like, I like to flip over to Fox news and see what they talking about. And to them it's uh, the liberals fault that the mob came in there. You know what I'm saying? Y'all might be watching CNN and MSNBC cause they tell you nice stuff and y'all agree with them or whatever. But I'm telling you, if you flip up a couple of channels and listen to Fox news, everything that, that you hearing on there, they saying the opposite on them channels. They are encouraging and pushing that mob to do more and more. They agree with everything that they did. It's another one, too, what they call uh, Newsmax. Woo, that one's crazy. They gave them, them two sisters a show. What's their name? Uh, Diamond and Silk. You ever see them? Oh, man, they crazy. They crazy. They like big Trump supporters. You ain't never see them two sisters that was like at the Trump rallies? You, you know what I'm talking about? They gave them a show on that, on that uh, channel. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy. Read it again where I'm at. Verse 23. Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 24, verse 23. Yeah. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Yeah. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And again, they... They got some people even here, even as Israel, you know, deceived, believing that things are going to change now with Biden. Our people truly believe that a lot. The majority of our people believe that he if he say the right things, that things is going to change. Go ahead. I was going to say, because it was what, 70 million people, right? Yeah. And then um, the split was only like 50 to 7, 40 7.3 or something like that from what I remember seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was tight. So it's still telling you that some of the people that are still on the on the um, Republican side. The Repub no, no, the Democratic side. Democrat side, side mm -hmm. are still on that fence. They just don't agree with Trump. But their mindset is still based on uh, Americanism. Right. Make white America supreme, great. White supremacy, white supremacy. And all those That's things. That's what Americanism is, though. It is. Yeah. I, it I, is. I mean, I'm saying Americanism, but the, the true root of it, like you said, is white supremacy. Go ahead. Right. No. So when Biden goes in the office, do you think those 70 million people are going to disappear? Nope. They're going to still be out there, and they're going to be bucking up even harder because they really going to they don't have somebody that's going to really so and so back their philosophy. Yep. But at least in front of the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah. But they're going to continue to push even harder because now they feel like they got something else to fight against. Yep. yep. They got this guy to fight against as well as you know us. Yep. You know, the rest of the the, rest they, of the nation. And they're moving closer and closer to just acknowledging it. That's the that's the, the most important thing. When they just acknowledge that their ideology is white supremacy, then we'll be able to get somewhere. But they're not going to acknowledge it. They're going to keep the, 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 the plot in the back, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't really what it is, but that's what it really is. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, read it again. Where am I? Verse 24. 24. Yeah. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And again, the ideology, the Christ, the, the, the religion of this country is white supremacy, is Americanism, is what you see happening on Capitol Hill. That's the true ideology of this country. We are in the midst of a white mob. They just, they just haven't fully revealed their true colors yet. Go ahead. Behold, I have told you before. He said, behold, I told you. I'm telling you, I told you. Don't be confused that you're seeing all this stuff. I already told y'all this is what's going to happen. Go ahead. 
Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Mm -hmm. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Yep. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So the Son of Man is going to be like the coming of lightning. It's going to be quick. That's what it's going to be like. It ain't going to be like a slow, how long it take for this dang on uh, election to happen? Weeks. Dang near. Go ahead. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So that's us. We the carcasses, and the eagle is this mob that we in the midst of. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Give me that one. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, mm -hmm. in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in the want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. Until you're dead. He put that yoke of iron on your neck until you are mentally dead. We are the carcasses. Go ahead. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, mm -hmm. from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Here it come. A nation of fierce countenance. A what? A fierce countenance. No, read 50 one more time. Verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance. A nation of fierce countenance. It don't say it's going to be 10 of them. It don't say it's going to be... Two million of them. It say the whole nation is a fierce countenance. You know who the who got shot going through the the dang on the door? Who was it? Y'all know who it was? You know who it was? Going through the door. They one of them got shot trying to break in. Y'all know who it was? Can you bring up the picture of the person that got shot? They from San Diego. I want y'all to see the picture. I want y'all to see the picture of who it was that was trying to kick in the door at the Capitol, and got shot. Oh, yep, scroll over, scroll over. Nope, over. Yep, there she go, right there. You see that? Blow that one up. The Trump hat on, thumbs up. Yeah, that's the one. Now let's read the scripture again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 50. Yeah. A nation of fierce countenance. A nation of fierce countenance. It's not talking about just the men. It's talking about man, woman, child. They all are of fierce countenance this is what they want to do all 70 million plus of them that whole white mob agree with this ideology we are in the midst of it some of y'all ain't built like that some of y'all sisters is not built to go kick in the door of the capital she was though <laughs> it's a, a nation of fierce countenance this is what we're dealing with oh nice whole nation read it again Verse 50, a nation of fierce countenance, yep. which shall not regard the person of the old, yep. nor show favor to the young. Nor show favor to the young. And the bishop has showed us that multiple times. A lot of times they was hanging up uh, our brothers on trees. It was, it was women. It was the white woman was out there taking pictures, celebrating that thing, encouraging and promoting and pushing they white men to do these things to us. They was with it. They was kicking in those with them. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead on that. You ever see um what was it black black clansman? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Remember the woman in that in that thing that she was willing to do anything that she could to support her husband's philosophies. Yep. She's the one that delivered the, what delivered the bomb, I think like that, that backfired on her. Yep. Ended up killing yep. all of them dudes. But it's yep. like that's how they are. Don't don't think what's his name? Miss Laura? Yeah. Miss Laura. Becky, uh, yeah. Miss Laura, Karen. Karen. I'm talking about the one from um the Django. That was Laura, yeah. That was Laura, Say right? bye to Miss Laura. Yeah, Miss Laura is out there, mm -hmm. and, and she ain't your friend. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Say a whole nation. Whole nation. Let's go back to, where was I at? Matthew 24. Courage in the midst of a white mob. Come on. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29. Yeah. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. I like 28, man. I just like 28. Read it one more time. Verse 28. For wheresoever the carcass is. So that's us. We are the carcass. Wherever we are. There will the eagles be gathered together. There will the eagles be gathered together. There will that nation be gathered together against us. It's going to be a whole mob of them. Go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Yeah. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. 
And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Mm. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Yeah. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Learn the parable of the tree. fig tree. Go ahead. Where his branch is yet tender mm -hmm. and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So when you see us putting forth leaves, when you see the body continue to grow, what is the Lord saying? Summer is near. It's getting hot out here. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Yeah. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Yeah. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Mm. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. You know, I thought this was, I thought that, that statement that Christ made right there was very interesting. Read that one more time. Verse 36. Let me just show you how my, how my brain go when I'm reading the Bible. Go ahead. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Let's jump back to verse 20. Matthew chapter 24, verse 20. Yeah. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Now, Christ is saying, pray that your flight be not in the winter. Why? Because he don't know the time of the hour that's going to happen. He's saying, pray that it's not in the winter, man. I pray that it's not in the winter. I'm praying for y'all. Y'all need to pray for yourself that this tribulation is not happening in the winter. Because why? Read verse 36 again. Verse 36. This don't got nothing to do with that. It's just my mind and what it does when I'm reading the Bible. But go ahead. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Knoweth no man. Christ don't even know. He's just saying, I hope it ain't in winter for y'all's sake. Go ahead. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Yep. But as the days of Noah were. But what? But as the days of Noah were. Yes. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. What were the days of Noah like? Let's see. Genesis chapter 6. He says, as the days of Noah were. Are, are we living like the days of Noah right now? Let's see. Genesis 6. We'll start at verse 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 1. Yeah. And it came to pass, when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, yeah. and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they cho chose. All which they chose. I'm going to tell you all this, man. It is amazing to me the amount of commercials on youtube on whatever facebook tv the amount of commercials where a white man is with a black woman it drives me i can't understand every commercial my wife be tapping me on the shoulder look they're another they're another they're another i'll be like oh my gosh every commercial they are trying to push that thing man read that scripture again watch what it say verse two that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. That's that what's happening. The son, we thinking in our head, the, the sons of God, that's us. That's you children of Israel. Go ahead. Saw the daughters of men that were, that were fair, uh -huh. and they took them wise of all which they chose. Because their minds turned into mush. They was perpetuating that interracial marriage. That's what we see in today. It says, as the days of Noah. That's what Noah was dealing with. They was pushing interracial marriage. Go ahead. Verse 3, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. And I'm telling y'all again, I'm, I'm from Texas, you know what I'm saying, as y'all know. That is not okay. It is completely not okay, man. I got cousins, right, that is completely written out of the will, completely not spoken to by my family at all. My aunts came to visit me one time, right? I asked my aunt, I say, aunt, man, what's going on with cousin such and such? She say, oh, we don't fool with her no more. I'm like, what? Y'all don't fool with her no more? Like, she good, man. She just graduated college. She a dentist now. She doing good. Oh, you don't know what happened? She got married to such and such while she was in college. What? Not cousin? Oh, yeah, she out the wheel. She done. She ain't got everything, everything that we got as a family. She don't got nothing to do with it. Go ahead. I'm going to say, it's funny how times have changed. I'm That's what the point I was making. Go right. ahead. Right. So a little bit like I'm a little older than you. Mm -hmm. So back then, it was an abomination for a black man Taboo. to be with a white woman. Yes. They abs And there's a reason behind that. Yeah. But they absolutely hated that. But now, like you say, you see the white woman with the black man. Yep. No. 
you see the <laughs> the black what woman, trying to say? The, black the black woman, woman with, with the white, the white man. man. But it's vice versa. It's happening yeah. both ways. You see that, and now it's acceptable. Yeah. And it's, it's a reason behind it because they know that they are not destroying their race when that happens. Well, and, and also the scripture got to come to pass. Remember, the Lord says the end going to come when it's like the days of Noah. Right. That thing had to change. It had to be a shift because, like you said, when you grew up, when I grew up, that was not okay. Right. That was completely unacceptable. My parents, my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, they think it is something wrong with you if you do that. My mom put the fear of God. You better That's not. That's what I'm saying. Ever That's what I'm saying. Bring a white woman to my house. Man. I'm like, okay. Okay. My mama told me the same thing. She said, this is what she always say to me. She said, you see what your daddy brought home? <laughs> That's what you do. Yep. That's what that was how she would say it to me. Every, every all the time. I remember, <laughs> let me tell you this quick story. I remember I was I was riding my bike home from school, right? And this white girl, her name was uh, Julie Olson. Dang. For some reason, I still remember that name. Oh, man. She was like, can I get still a ride, love, boy, I get a ride go, down man. to the bowling alley <laughs> on the back of my bike, right? Yeah. And, and me, you know, I'm like, okay. And, man, that was the fastest ride because I was scared to death that my mom might see me <laughs> riding this white girl on the back of my bike. Boy, I was riding hard. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know if I stopped to let her off. Like, <laughs> Tuck and roll. <laughs> But the scripture, again, go back to Christ. What did he say? Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 37. Yeah. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. So we got to get back to the days of Noah. Like you said, our parents and the parents of before them, they didn't have this thought. They were not okay with interracial marriage. They throw eggs on you, disband you from the family, all type of stuff. I'm telling pictures of the wedding from my cousin. It was like only his side of the, the the wedding was filled. Like that was it. Like nobody from my side of the family went. They was pissed. I didn't even know about it. They didn't even tell me. They're like, oh, you, yeah, you didn't hear about that? Nah, I ain't here. I guess I guess I wasn't supposed to hear. They completely kicked out. And that's that's two of them though. It's two of them like that in my family. Two females that was completely disowned. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, and they don't even believe the Bible. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they Christians. They believe it like Christians do, but they, if you read them, you know, Deuteronomy where it tell them, you know, you shouldn't marry the other nation, they'll be like, I, they don't mean that. You know what I'm saying? But in their mind, they like, they know they shouldn't do it. All right. Where I'm at? Verse 38. Nah, Deuteronomy, uh, I mean, Genesis, Genesis 6. Go back to Genesis. So it says, like Noah. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. Yeah. Verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in hundred and twenty years. Yeah. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Here it comes. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Yes. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And that's what we living in right now. Every thought of man is evil continually. It, it's crazy, man, because, you know, you look back at the time that Christ lived. And, you know, we, we went over some of that history, how it was a temple. It was a it was a, a a pagan temple right next to uh our temple. You think know what I'm saying? And now today you go into things like like Onias was talking about, Clubhouse. You might have brothers talking about the Bible right here, and then you scroll down and it's like Thought City. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. But it's it's the, the abominations is right next to uh the righteousness. This all looked like one loop. Read it again. Verse 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, yep. and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Continually, even though if you might try to focus in on the Most High, let me focus in on the Lord's Word, there's going to be some evil right around the corner. You got to continue to try to get your thoughts back right. Go ahead. And it repented the Lord that he had made man of, this, of the earth, yep. and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And that's what we got to do. How do we find grace in the Lord? Again, like we read in Titus, like we read in Judges, right? We got to continue to rehearse the righteous acts, and we got to continue to build. 
That's the only thing that's going to give us courage in the midst of this white mob. Go ahead. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. So even though it was, uh, what did it say? It was uh, evil in the sight of the Lord. It was interracial marriage going on. Everybody's imagination and thoughts was evil continually. Noah still was able to maintain. Go ahead. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Yep. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And the earth was filled with violence. Again, like we see today, like we just saw on the news on Wednesday, like we see, and, 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 and it's so crazy that it's so many other wars going on out there. This, this country is fighting wars all over the place. What we see in here in this country today is just one of the many battles that's, that they fight. It's a battle here between Democrats and Republicans. And it's also a battle going on between them and, and Al-Qaeda. And, and uh, who else? Who else? Turkey. Uh, 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 who else? Bahrain. No, I don't think they're fighting in Bahrain right now. Iran. Right, right, right. they fight against them Persians. Yep. So everywhere. Everywhere. they fighting wars on all fronts. Cold wars. Uh, uh, what's the other thing? IT wars, electronic wars. They got all type of wars going on on all type of fronts. Let's go back. Let's go to uh, Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11. Yeah. And I will punish the world for their evil yeah. and the wicked for their iniquity. So he said he's going to punish the world for their evil. Go ahead. And I will cause their and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. So the arrogancy of this country of America, he's going to cause it to cease. Go ahead. And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Mm -hmm. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. That man is us. That man is the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, the Israelites. He's going to make us great again. Go ahead. Even a man, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Yeah. Therefore will I shake the heavens. What are you going to do? Therefore will I shake the heavens. He's trying to wake us up. We are that heavens. We are the ones that's supposed to be leading this country. We are the, not this country. We're the one that's supposed to be leading the world. He's going to shake us. He's going to wake us up. He said he's going to shake the heavens. Go ahead. And the earth shall remove out of her place. And the earth, making reference to who? The eagle, that other nation, that white mob. They're going to move out of our place. They in our place right now. The Lord got to move them out of our place. Read it again from the top. Therefore will I shake the heavens. He's going to wake us up. And the earth shall remove out of her place. Get that white mob out the way. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. Yep. And it shall be as a chaste roe. And that other nation, that white mob is going to be like, what? And it shall be as a chaste roe. Yeah. And as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people. It's not going to be no more blacks for Trumps. It's not going to be none of that. If you do, let's see what's going to happen. And, and flee everyone into his own land. Yep. Every one that is found shall be thrust through. Every one of them that want to stay on their side. They say, you know what, man, I agree with this, Trumplicans. I agree with these guys. You're going to be thrust through. Go ahead. And every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Yes. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Mm. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Let's go to Psalms chapter 23. Psalms 20. So again, the courage that we have to have in the midst of this white mob. 23, start at verse 1. Mm -hmm. The book of Psalms, chapter 23 and verse 1. Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Yep. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Yep. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So the Lord is leading us through a path of righteousness. Read on. Yea. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Where is this path at? Read it again. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The path is through the shadow of the valley of death. The path is in the midst of this white mob. That's the path. We got to be in the midst of this white mob. But we got to still have courage in it. Read it again. Start mm -hmm. at verse 3. Verse 3. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. The path of righteousness is where? For Go ahead. For his name's sake. Yep. Yea. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So the path is through the shadow of the valley of death. It's going to look like death all around us. It's going to be some parts, some parts of this movie where you might say, you know what? This is a little rough. This is a little scary. But he said, that's the path. That's the path you got to take. It's going to be through the valley, the valley of the shadow of death. 
that's our path. Go ahead. I will fear no evil. Yep. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff, us holding on and doing and applying the action that's in this Bible, like we read in Titus 1 and 5, like we read in Judges, uh, what is that, 5? Like we read there, those things are the things that's going to keep us uh, courageous in the midst of this white mob. Read Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, one more time. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6. Yeah. Be strong and of a good courage. Yep. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doeth good with thee. So don't be afraid of this white mob, right? Maintain your courage, even though we might, that, that mob... That mob could be outside of here one day. It could happen. But what are we going to do? We got to maintain our courage. And it, you, got, you got, you know, guys like Razus, guys like the, the woman that had the seven sons to look to, to maintain that courage. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.